LG Chem is about to spend billions and billions of dollars manufacturing the United States' biggest electric vehicle battery cathode manufacturing facility. But I think, and I can't help but feel, that this is possibly an unwise decision. I know, sounds crazy. I mean, surely it makes sense, right? Well, here's why I think it actually doesn't. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. My name's Sam Evans, and I'm coming to you from Melbourne, Australia. Thank you for tuning in, and it's great to have you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. LG Chem announced recently it has signed a memorandum of understanding with the state of Tennessee, a lot of investment into electric cars, batteries, etc., going on in Tennessee right now for a $3 billion cathode factory for electric vehicles, for batteries for electric vehicles. The new plant will be sited in Clarksville and it'll be the largest of its kind in the US by a sum margin. It's going to sit on 420 acres. I have no idea why they need that much land, but hey, why not? And is going to produce 120,000 tons of cathode material annually by 2027. That's enough to power batteries in 1.2 million EVs with a range of 310 miles per charge, says Electric. So 1.2 million EVs. That's a lot of cathode material. LG Chem said it chose the Tennessee facility or the Tennessee area because of its proximity to key customers, being General Motors, ease of transporting raw materials, cooperation from state and local governments. Of course, Ford are also setting up there too, but their main battery partner is SK Innovation. It also cites the passage of the Biden administration's Inflation Reduction Act as a catalyst for the new factory, which will see the creation of 850 jobs. Basically, LG Chem is just saying, you know what? The IRA, the incentives in the IRA mean it makes sense for us to build this facility in the US. So add this to the growing list of massive amounts of investments being spent in the United States as a result, a direct result of the IRA. LG Chem said the Tennessee site will function as a supply chain hub where material and recycling partners work together to supply global customers such as Tesla and General Motors. The Clarksville factory will produce advanced NCMA, nickel, cobalt, manganese, aluminium, cathode materials for next-gen EV batteries with improved battery capacity and stability. Now, they didn't really say how those cathode materials are going to be advanced. They just say they're advanced. Personally, I'm not sold on this advancement. I'll tell you why in a second. NCMA cathode materials are among the most critical ingredients in the West for determining the battery capacity and life of electric vehicles. The company's battery cycling partner is Lifecycle. So basically the end version of a battery pack, if you're new to this channel, isn't that they get thrown into landfill or waste. The cathodes are recycled. The entire battery packs are recycled. In fact, the recycled, the materials in a battery pack can be worth more money than those raw materials from mining companies. Now, the Tennessee plant will feature LG Chem's most advanced production technology, including the ability to produce more than 10,000 tons of cathode material per line. LG Chem has already successfully applied this technology in its cathode factory in South Korea. Now, I want to point out, though, that the company is planning to utilize its smart technology in Tennessee to automate the entire production process and establish a quality analysis and control system. Obviously more automation, more quality control, and of course, less staff needed to produce the product. So that makes sense in terms of their actual ability to make a profit selling these cathode materials, which they'll have no problem selling. Construction of the factory is gonna begin in, well, actually in only two months time in 2023, in January or February. And it's gonna start in the second, and mass production of actual materials will start in the second half of 2025. So about two and a half years from now. LG Chem says the new factory will run completely on solar and hydroelectric power. So it's gonna be completely renewable energy powered. That's, that's pretty cool. The Tennessee site will play a critical role in the company's strategy to increase its battery materials business including cathode material fourfold 
from Korean 5 trillion in 2022 to Korean 20 trillion by 2027. Now, of course, LG Chem are uh, well, currently around about equal second place with BYD for battery manufacturing. So that's a good achievement. But they did used to be close to first place with CATL. They've lost a bit of market share in the last few years as a result of, well, one big thing. Their batteries, not only are they more expensive than BYD's batteries and then CATL's batteries because they are a lithium ternary battery using, of course, what I just mentioned before, aluminium, nickel, cobalt, and manganese, but also because they are much more prone to degradation, fire, and all kinds of different battery manufacturing defects. It's true. Unfortunately, LG Chem has had more battery recalls and problems than pretty much every other battery company put together in the world over the last few years. Now I'm talking about battery manufacturers for electric cars, not every battery company, but the main ones. And these are the main companies that are mass producing battery packs. Clearly LG Chem believes that lithium ternary batteries are the future of batteries in North America and globally. Personally, I'm extremely skeptical that that's true. In fact, you'll find many analysts now do agree with me on this, that lithium ion phosphate batteries, as Elon Musk said himself about a year ago, are the future of the electric vehicle battery industry. Now, you didn't hear him saying solid state. You didn't hear him saying lithium ternary batteries, which at the time was Tesla's primary battery that they used. He said lithium ion phosphate, even though Tesla wasn't primarily selling those as their main product at the time. Now, of course, fast forward more than a year later, and more than 50% of Tesla vehicles come with lithium ion phosphate batteries. And look how many battery recalls Tesla have had in the last 12 months on those cars. Yeah, exactly, zero. See my point, right? How many battery recalls have other companies selling LG Chem batteries using lithium ternary batteries had? Hundreds and hundreds of thousands. So will lithium ternaries be the future of the battery industry? I don't think so. I think that's highly unlikely. Will they still be an important part of the industry? Yes. The most important part? I don't think so. I think it's only going to be a matter of time before companies start moving away from cobalt completely, moving away from lithium ternary batteries and their need for these kinds of battery materials. Lithium ion phosphate batteries are much simpler and energy density of those packs is significantly increasing with new versions of the chemistry, which is the key reason I'm not so sure that manufacturing a facility this big for this many EVs that reduces a battery chemistry, which is going to decline in popularity over the next 10 years, is the best investment LG Chem could have made. In my view, there's actually not just lithium ion phosphate battery technology that will be the future of batteries, but also batteries using similar chemistry to CATL's new pack, which is a very heavily manganese dependent pack. And it's kind of a new hybrid version of a combination of a ternary battery and a lithium ion phosphate battery. In my opinion, that type of battery and lithium ion phosphate batteries are the future of the battery industry. But who knows where this could go? General Motors, of course, don't believe in lithium ion phosphate batteries. They're not planning on using any at all in their cars. I think that's a big mistake. But it does mean LG Chem will have a big customer, GM. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.